Welcome to part four of the tutorial on how to sew Flora Burn shoulder bag. This is the last tutorial. Okay, now let's move on to the front and the back main exterior. So the front has a zipper here in on the sides here that is opening up so it becomes a slit to expand the bag. And I see that I cut one zipper a little short, but that doesn't matter because uh, the decor strip is going to come here and cover it. So all we have to do is fasten these zippers along the edge. And then we're going to sew down here to sew the zippers on. And then we'll sew the other part of the zipper to the side. Here's the side parts. The curve, so you see here is the diagonal. Here's the side. So we'll sew that on as well. And then we do the same on the other side. We clip it on. Because now we will sew all four sides in one go. We're ready for that now. Maybe pull the zipper away. Do the same on the other side. Okay, so now let's see what this looks like. Now we need to press this like that. We can press it with an iron if you have, um, if you're using fabric like I am. Because before we top stitch on the each side of the zipper, we're going to put these. Let's see, that must be the wrong thing. We're going to put this zipper slit background for the zipper slit.
now when we close this, be careful so it doesn't pop off, off because then you have to put it back on again. It will be a little bulge on the back, but that's fine. And then you see we have this little fold, but that's on the inside of the bag. So the bag gets a little narrower. So what we now need to do here is put these, these guys on. And we really want them on when the zipper is closed. We mark up where the center is so we get them equal on each side of the center line. So you find, you follow the curve here and you see, so this is how it's going to be on that side. We do the same on the other. You see how easy it is to take the tape off even if there was a little folded here and there. Now we make sure that this is just enough the same distance from the center as the other. So now we got these on and now we can st top stitch around to keep it in place. Okay, so now we, we have glued these on and now it's time to remember two things. One, I would like to use rubber foam to sturdy up this bag, but I don't want rubber foam in the slit. So, and I want to stay away from the seam allowances. So let's see, I think I want one there. I'll fasten one here and then we'll catch it when it when we top stitch this decor panel then we'll catch both of them because we're having one here and one there just manage to stay away try to stay away from the seam allowance because these are cut without seam allowance so this should behave I think I can cut a little extra there. And then the other one goes here. So now, as you see, I have a little dot there. And this is because we need to put the magnetic snap on here. So put it there according to the pattern. So I'll make a little slit through the rubber foam and everything. Maybe it was too small, but I'm a little scared to go too far. 
just putting the prongs in the holes. That worked out good. And then I have made this little rectangle of vinyl. This, to, this is to strengthen the hold. This, this coincidentally had a little piece of double-sided tape on, so I used that, okay. And now the little washer. And these prongs we can bend to the side. And press them down hard. There. Now that's good. We're done with the front exterior. Now we only need to do the back exterior. Starting with the zipper tabs on the zipper. So one we just sew happily and then we measure afterwards. So now we only need to sew this on. We can actually mark the center of the zipper where that is. You can mark that with a pen on the wrong side. And then we can cut a little mark on this like that. Now we know where the center is on both when we clip them in place. And then we need the pocket. We put that right side of the lining towards this. And then we sew one more time here on top of the other seam. I'm feeling now for the zipper lock so I can avoid it. There is the zipper pocket, goes down here this way. I can actually press this or finger press it. Do what you like. Now we can put the other pocket piece, right side of the pocket to the right side of the pocket there and then we have to put that a little further up and then we can actually fasten the pocket here now so you see the pocket you have to even out a little bit not too much
because one pocket starts higher up than the other, one pocket piece. I'm just going to fasten this pocket just so we know it's there. Now it's time for our branding. I hope you have your own branding because it's so much more fun to make bags when you have your own name on. In case they're so pretty that nobody believes you did it. And you can say, but that's my brand. So, let's see here. Mark up the center, just so I know where to put it. I had this uh, four leather. Um, patches made from thestudio.com the studio so I just use a little tape just to hold it in place so I'm trying to use as much tape as possible as you see like, like I'm getting paid per yard used <laughs> that's not true though so I put this on the center. I make sure this pocket is away. And then I sew around this label. I could have put this um, branding on after I put the rubber foam on because you know we the rubber foam has to be put in place here away from the edges like that I'm going to just fasten it here and okay a little more over Because this is only a furniture fabric and I like it when the bag can almost stand by itself. That's why I love to use the rubber foam. We can put these, our little decor panels on. Okay, I forgot to mark up the center. So I'm kind of eyeballing where it has to go because of the curve. So now I can sew around them too. Now that should be working fine. What we'll do here is cut a little away so we make sure the rubber foam doesn't conflict with our pocket. There we go. The back lower part is ready. Now this is the top part. It goes like that. And then we have this lid. The lid has to go. I guess we should mark up the center and mark up the center of the we said the lid would go this way and now we have to make sure we don't sew this thing. Let's hold. Let's See what I do here? I can 
fasten that with the pin so it doesn't fall into the seam there. It's getting pretty thick here. Still, that's not it because we still need to put the strap here. So here we go. It's important that you check that this, this lid is symmetrical. Now it looks good, maybe a little bit over to that side, there. And then we need to find a little strap. And that has to go, see now this is the wrong side of the lid and the wrong side of the strap has to lay up and it has to be placed exactly on the center mark of the lid. Okay, right in the center of our lid. That looks like it's pretty good in the center there. So all we have to do now is fold the whole thing up. Everything goes up. And then we're going to top stitch. If you have a regular machine or a machine like me, I, I don't dare to sew through that. Okay, so now we're on to the gusset. And we could stick this in the pocket to do away with it. The strap. And I think we will also try to fasten this pocket up. So we won't sew it by an error. Let's fasten this gusset to the bag. And here again, we make little snips so it's easy for us to get the straight gusset, follow the curved edge. It's smart to mark up for the center here as well center of the gusset we already have the center of the bag we're going to need the center of the gusset both ways here both front and back now we have that and now we can clip the gusset on around here that around the back exterior 
It's actually easier to do the front last because it is wider. So it's easier to do the top stitch when it's wider. Now we're ready to sew around here and then top stitch on top of it. See how easy it is when you only have one piece. See the top stitch this makes the seams come out really good. So especially since we can't iron this anyway. But what we will do now is cut away the seam allowance that's a little too much. It's not a lot. Especially in the curve. Now we only have the front. Now remember the front is wider, but it's not going to be as tough as it would if it was the same as the other. Let's do it. So now I have to do the top stitch.
We only have one little thing left and that's the top binding. Let's put that in place. It's going to be pretty, right? So what we have to do now is put the lining in. Remember to put the back towards the back. There. And the front towards the front and then the mid mark. And then we'll just clip it in place. While we stuff it, make sure it's really into the bottom. So first we're going to sew one uh, seam on top here just to fasten it and then we're going to put the binding on. We, we are only sewing just as high up as we can because we're only fastening the lining to the exterior. Take this binding, let's fold it in two all the way. To make it easier to fold later. So we're starting at the back here. Clipping it on. Actually, it's easier to do it like that. Make sure you get an equal amount on the on both sides of this binding. It's this is not hard to do. We, I'll, I just don't want to cut them totally even in case things move on the way as we sew. So now we'll just sew this. Then we are done. I'm sorry, but when you didn't look, I put these three rivets in here. First, I marked up on the strap where they're supposed to be. Then I cut a hole in the strap. Then I marked up with a fill pen through the holes where the hole came on the lid. And then I cut the holes there. And then I put the rivets in. It's pretty cute. Now I can put back this strap here. And there, we're done. 
Thank you so much for watching all my tutorials, hopefully, on how to make the Flora Burn shoulder bag. You can make your own. If you want to buy the pattern, it's $6 and you buy it at my website annebonniebags.com or you can buy it on Etsy at annebonniebags. Thank you so much if you were one of those who subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Okay, good luck with your own bag. Have a wonderful day.